Turning to business news now with Patrick O'Mara. 60 of the country's leading businesses have banded together to fight climate change. Patrick, I saw Naitahu was involved in this too. Um, time to walk the talk. Yeah, indeed, John. Uh, this uh, Climate Leaders Coalition uh, has 60 firms which have signed up, and as you point out, Naitahu is uh, one of them. We've got Z Energy, uh, Fonterra, uh, Spark, Westpac, Freightways, Ports of Auckland, Kiwi Rail. So some big names in there, putting their names behind it. And so obviously, Patrick, I, I, yes? w w they can put their names behind it, and they can hold hands and sing Kumbaya. But what are they actually going to? What are they actually going to do? Does this mean anything? Well, yeah, well, it does, John. I mean, it's partly a support group, uh, so like an AA meeting in some ways for these guys, because what they'll do is they've all got internal targets that, they, that, they've, that they've, uh, they've put out there already. Like, for example, Fonterra has got a 30% uh, gross emissions reduction uh, in, in, in emissions by 2030, and by 2050 they've committed themselves to net carbon zero um, emissions. So these these targets are there. Uh, they're also going to share ideas uh, of how they're going to go about it. Uh, so I wouldn't discount it, uh, though you could argue that, look, um, business have known about climate change for a very, very, very long time. Uh, we could go back to the 1990s now when the government put out its first climate mm. change policies mm. in this area. Um, but look, some of it, I mean, it's, I guess the question is going to be how do we monitor these firms to make sure they're doing what they say they're doing? And, and and partly the argument has always been, particularly from uh, environmentalists, is that what are they doing which is more than just business as usual? Yeah. Now, some of them are going to be, uh, as we saw with Zen Energy last week, it committed $1.5 million uh, into uh, putting more into forestry. Now, again, some would argue, actually, that's not really enough. You can't just do that. So they're also, these firms are going to have to back it up by real reductions in emissions. And if we take someone like Fonterra, for example, they have a number of coal-fired uh, plants which they use for drying milk and, and producing product because there's no gas in the South Island. So how are they going to go and wean themselves off that, for example? Now, they can't say that they will be, that, 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 that by the time they, these targets uh, reach their, uh, come to the end of their targets of 2030 and 2015, 2050, that they will say that they will stop burning coal entirely, but they're looking for ways at how they might reduce them. So, uh, you, you know, I mean, you're right to be you're right to be sceptical. We want to make sure that they do it, but you'd argue, John, that it's it is good business sense. Yeah. More and more people are worried about these sort of things, and firms should be playing their part. And they should be, and uh, I'm all for it if they do it. Yeah, by golly. Uh, Patrick, investor confidence in financial markets and the way they run is apparently still solid. This is interesting, isn't it? Because we're seeing a lot of surveys. We seem to be almost uh, <laughs> flooded by them. But actually, investor confidence in markets is a sort of self-fulfilling thing, isn't it? Yeah, and we'll look at uh, for this. This one's been running now since about 2013, I, I think, uh, looking back at um, the ones that we've seen. Um, and there has been... Uh, confidence has remained fairly stable for most of it. So 62% of respondents are, are confident, slightly down from last year, but statistically not that much different. And look, you can see the reasons why. Um, the share market, for example, has been on a tear. So uh, a lot of confidence in our companies. Uh, interest rates have been low. They've all been making lots of profits, and that means more dividends. So why wouldn't you be confident? Uh, and also the economic back backdrop is looking very good. I guess the, as, and you wouldn't be surprised, those who are knowledgeable about markets are even more confident than others. Um, but from the FMA's point of view, I guess their concern lies in those who are not showing that level of confidence in investment markets. And they tend to be the young, they tend to be Pacific, they tend to be women. And they have got, I guess, in some ways, a lot of work to do to convince these people that markets are a good bet. The returns are very good, um, but in fact, they're better than in some areas like term deposits. But what you tend to find is those who don't have confidence in markets tend to go with what they feel more comfortable with. And that is something like term deposits where you're earning very little on your money. They're not convinced yet that putting them into stock markets, for example, are a good thing. Uh, and it's partly the language that, the, that we talk about. It's their understanding of things like which is a risk return uh, and the trade-off between those things. Um, and when, you come, when it comes to things like property, they, they'd probably put their money into that. The other issue that they're looking at too, from the FMA's point of view, is, is, is their role as regulator. 
Now, only something like four out of 10 New Zealanders really understand the FMA's role uh, in that area, the Financial Markets Authority. Um, they're not so worried about that. What they're more worried about is, is that they're just seeing a little bit of lack of confidence in the regulation of the market. They're putting it down to some of the things that we've seen so far this year, uh, particularly the uh, CBL insurance collapse, um, probably Fletcher Buildings performance, was re which really hit the headlines, and possibly the Royal uh, Commission over in Australia into banking. Uh, which is what we've seen over there, is how they were ripping off customers. That's probably shaken a little bit of confidence there. Yeah, and deservedly so in some respects. What's happened on the markets today, Patrick? Uh, down 16 points, John. We've uh, fallen below that 9,000 mark that we'd enjoyed for the last uh, few days. Basking uh, but course, in it. Basking yeah. in it, Patrick. <laughs> yeah, but obviously that trend we've just seen <laughs> in the last few days, actually but there, the markets had been floating down. So they're now down below the 9,000 mark, down 16 points or 0.2% at 8,985. On the currencies, let's start off with the British pence, just in recognition of that brave English effort. Not good enough for Croatia, but they got there in the end. It's buying 51.2 British pence, 67.6 uh, uh, American, and 91.5 Australian, John. Patrick O'Mara, thank you very much indeed.